He has a plan for you. Discernment is the effort to seek to know this will of God for this particular person. Studies, prayer, discussions, and consultation and self-examination are means towards discernment. It is not a negative thing, much less a disgrace. If at some stage of the seminary or religious profession uh, formation, it becomes clear that the candidate is meant for another vocation in the lay state, the will of God for each person is more important than what that person wants, or even what the parents or parish priest want. Once parents said to me, "Anya nka esi ni yechiro, anya ebu ni enani." Kupo nu na unu na haboka yechi mechun. Mo abu nu na unwa ya nka di anya ka ana malebo neje odu ku iche. No one wound can a poor way, a balloon, a book, a yet. Some people who have been advised to leave the seminary or religious novitiate, I prefer not to call them ex seminarians or ex religious. Some of them have proved themselves to be excellent lay people who have discharged major functions in church and society. We are just looking for the will of God for you. Some have become presidents of republics, famous university dons, and leading public figures. I don't want to name people in Nigeria, some who were in the seminary, and they have proved excellent citizens. The parents of St. Teresa of Lisieux, Louis Martin and Zelie Marie Guerin, they tried to become a priest, the man, and a religious, the woman, but they were advised that that was not their vocation, that they should leave the lay state. So they married. One of their daughters, Teresa, is canonized a saint. Another daughter is now on the process of canonization, and they themselves were canonized together on 18th October 2015 as Mr. and Mrs. Martin. They themselves were canonized together. It follows that seminary staff and superiors and formators of religious should make a big effort to help seminarians and candidates to the religious life to appreciate that the most important decision for their lives is what God wants for this individual. Those candidates who have to be advised to leave and look for another vocation should not be sent away in a climate of rejection or faith, should regard their training as precious and very helpful for their future. Another misunderstanding is many don't understand the religion of the religious brother. They think that a brother is a young man who could not become a priest, so he tried to become a brother. No It is not true. It is, the priest is different from brother. Their vocations are different. It's not a question of bigger or smaller. Therefore, if a person asks you, which one is bigger, the priest or the brother? Think about it. Which is bigger, priest or brother? <laughs> if you say priest, you are wrong. If you say brother, you are wrong. The answer is, the question is wrong. <laughs> yes. The person who asks you, priest or brother, which is bigger, is wrong. It is like asking you, doctor and lawyer, doctor and judge, which is bigger. The question is wrong. Because one is not a grade of the other. They are different vocations. 
the priest is not a higher grade than their brother. You go to ordination. The bishop tells the priest, you will do three things. Consecrate, preach, and gather the people. You go to religious profession. It is the individual who says, I want to follow Christ more closely by the three vows of poverty, chastity, obedience. They are two different vocations. On the last May, on the last day before God, we will know who is bigger. And I think we will have surprises on that day. So in this respect, it is sad that some ladies who are advised that the religious life is not their vocation in the convent, they absolutely refuse to accept this. They say, I want to live and die a sister. And they insist that they have to live like that. And some of them navigate from one religious order to another. And when they are not accepted again, they can try some uh, group in Italy, which are not enough candidates. And once they are sure it's a girl, not a boy, they accept him, accept her. And then later on, they find out the same thing, which the congregation that rejected that one found out 10 years before. By that time, you are 10 years older. And you are confused. You don't know which way. Forward gear, no. Backward gear, no. While there may be no swear mathematically that this person cannot be a priest, a sister, but the superiors can say, after everything examined, we think you should not be a sister. But she replies, no, I will live and die a reverend sister. If they tell her to go away, she will make her own habit and uh, also try to found her own congregation and make herself the mother foundress. Bishops and priests cannot avoid the unpleasant responsibility of doing what is possible to save young girls from following such adventures, toying with their lives. Sometimes it becomes necessary to make helpful announcements to the Catholic community regarding such ventures that this group will end up in smoke. One can see from such developments, which are not pure fantasies, why Holy Mother Church is rather strict in rules for the setting up of religious congregations. The church legislates on the importance of proven rules and constitutions and on the minimum number of members before a diocesan bishop applies to Rome for the green light to approve a pious union as a religious congregation. Respected brothers and sisters in Christ, the priesthood and the religious state are gifts of the Lord Jesus to his beloved spouse, the church. We adore divine providence. We thank the Lord. May the most blessed Virgin Mary, mother of the church, intercede for us so that every one of us, each in his or her vocation, may do what is in our power to foster vocation to the sacred priesthood and to the religious life. To God be honor and glory forever and ever.
Test the Anisia, everything was working perfectly. On when the Bialuno Geba Una Falumbaina test the microphone. And you test the microphone five minutes to ten. Ozibon Nasi Nanani, his eminence. Now Batana dog, and you pull out microphone Tibemku. Microphone Abonio Gomo. Immediately. This was the microphone I need to know from 9 a.m. on the leba. On our low perfectly. And I got a gamnesia. Not a tabagone. Not a tabada tanani. Amaro Mobu joke on a two bube his eminence. Amaro me pebun sobe. Amaro me pebun sobe. Mana Ozibon Nasi. Can you pull out or Indibalo no gaman even the Wabra exaggeration? Ozibon Nasi. Can you pull out or Nabata his eminence? Obido Tibu. Nchenondi na operate microphone ti lele ugu agedi na bata his eminence amara na ajo mobile microphone isi okwetu aka anyi ni anu gidezi luckily obulo na anyi nwelu alternative na adifo una ewe ewe o obure ti on chat na ya ti ti e meta anyi na emeji ife mma eh eh mana unu ku na olu maka olu no bi jana e kwele ka ajo mma agala ihe achi ya kadifo good and yet, whenever you tell me once again, your grace, my lord, my angel of heaven will be to me. And then I have seen the eminence. Thank you for the time. Oh, we put tell you. We have to do Malika lecture and one. If any game messy kita abo, obulu no one lo. If he na gota serum bane ye this lecture, obulu no one lo. If he na gota serum, we la haku wogi. He then ya obulu niji ra akuko onwela akuko anyi chebia anyi ga yo ndi youth na abu kapabia kelonya ba akuko obulu niji ra akuko igeji we do question diko agenye ga akuko nya bulu more of if i could zilitata nya bulu more of
Not very clear. I do report. They didn't hear well. They didn't hear well. Maybe the microphone was not very clear. The first question is, an Anglican bishop in England becomes a Catholic about two weeks ago, called Bishop Gouda. The question becomes, what is his position in the Catholic Church? The response is, this Anglican bishop has declared that after praying for a long time, he sees he should become a Catholic. When he becomes a Catholic, he will apply to a priest or bishop and they will receive him. There is a ceremony for receiving a Protestant into the Catholic Church. All right. The Catholic Church recognizes the baptism of Anglicans as valid. So baptism is not repeated. But the Anglicans ruined ordination of priests many years ago, not Henry VIII. Henry VIII did not ruin the validity of the sacrament. He was only interested in women, only, but he didn't damage the sacrament. 
But later on, an Archbishop of Canterbury damaged priesthood and the Eucharist, reducing priesthood not as one who offers sacrifice, but as one who preaches. So Anglicans, they preach, but they cannot pray over bread and wine so that they become the body and blood of Christ and offer to God the Father. That is the sacrifice of the Mass. That's the main thing the priest does. If a person cannot do that, then the person is not a priest and not a bishop. Doesn't matter what he wears. It means then he can't have a church. In the strict theological sense, we say Anglican communion. The Anglicans know that. Only some of them don't know, but they know that. And some of them, after studying history, they know how their group began. Then God's grace moves him. He will be received into the church, so he becomes a Catholic. If he wants now to become a priest, because the Catholic Church doesn't recognize the validity of Anglican orders, then he will apply, and they will probably uh, put him to do more theology, to be sure that his theology is exact. And then when it is complete, he can be ordained a priest. There is a provision made by Pope Benedict for Anglicans who become Catholics so that they will be ordained if they want to be priests. They will say Mass. The Mass is valid Catholic Mass. They retouch a little of the prayer, the prayer they say, but it, they are now Catholics. It is called Anglican provision. If they are married, they are allowed to keep their wives, but not to go and marry another one. So if the wife were to die, he can't marry another one. But if he's already married, the marriage is in possession. You can't uh, tell the wife to go away. So she, he keeps the wife and looks after his children. That Anglican provision will arrange how to maintain them. It is not a law. He must be a priest. He may not want to be a priest. Then he just missed that. But if he wants, he can be admitted if he fulfills the condition. Suppose they find that his marriage was divorced, then he can't be a priest. So they will examine that. But he becomes a, he can be made monsignor. They are not made bishops. The Catholic Church never does that. Not even for Orientals who are married. Oriental Catholics can admit a married person to priesthood, but never an ordained person to now go and marry. I hope that that's clear now. So that's the answer to that. On the last day before God, we will know who is holier. Most ex-seminarians become useless or become a nuisance. That's what you say. I am not sure everybody will agree here that most seminarians ex become useless or nuisance. Maybe you saw one or two who became funny after leaving seminary. Maybe, but many of them have remained excellent and they have even association of ex all hallows. Bishop Isuza, can you tell us about these uh, ex all hallows seminarians who have association? We have what we call seminars. We have what we call Ahuba, all hallows school boy association. We work together very very well. There are many, even some of the candidates for the governorship uh, election belong to this group. I remember one famous one, Okiro, who was the police uh, inspector general. He's an ex -experience. But the problem is, especially when you talk of ex experience listen, I'm an ex experience myself. You understand? I'm an ex experience myself. You know how? All those who study that left the center are ex experience You got ex experience you have ex experience people. 
You understand? But they are not useless. Many of them are working, but they are doing very, very well in society. Indeed, if I use my own classmates as an example, when we finished, when we entered the seminary, we were 66 in number. Those who became to spies. And we are still talking to one another, related very, very well. In our association now, we have uh, women wing, children's wing, youth wing, and the uh, old boys. So our wives, the wives of the 61 members who left, they form our youth wing. Their children form our youth wing. And so we are still working together. Some people leave the seminary. The problem that they say that they must this. So they keep on trying, trying, they become very old. And they don't achieve very much in life. But most others are successful in life. So is that enough for <laughs> So it is to look for what God wants and what is possible. And anybody can be better than anybody. The other question, can an ex-religious form a congregation, ex-sister, ex and then she begins to found another one? Can it happen? Yes, it can happen, but there is a difference. Suppose a religious is in one congregation and somehow God's grace leads her to found another one. It is possible. Mother Teresa of Calcutta was a Loreto sister teaching, but God moved her when she saw poor people. And she took one or two others and they got proper good understanding from their congregation they were blessed, they had good relations, and they went to found another one, two or three or four, without quarreling with anybody. It is very different if a congregation of sisters considers a candidate not suitable for religious life, but that candidate insists and says, I want to live and die a sister. It doesn't matter what you say. So they try another place and try another place and try another place. That is not right. In any case, it is the duty of the diocesan bishop to approve a new congregation. You can gather 40 girls and 70 girls, but the bishop can declare, this is not approved. You go to another diocese, this is not approved. You can apply to Rome or even to God the Father, but you will not get approval. And you spoil the life of those young people, especially girls, because they join you at the age of 15. Before they see the whole thing ends in confusion, they are 25 years old or 30, you have ruined them. The bishop has, to, has the unpleasant duty to say, stop. And sometimes Rome does it also. You can say, but Mother Teresa went and founded, so I am become, I'm going to be Mother Teresa too. Perhaps. Thank you. 
Try to be brief, so we we'll take more questions. The first one says that I said, or said I'm not saying that priests and brothers are equal. But the person says, but they are not equal because the priest hears confession. I will even add, he celebrates mass and he blesses. I did not say that they are equal. But I said they are different. So I said a medical doctor and a judge of the high court, which is bigger. And I said the question is wrong. They are different vocations. It is not a question of bigger or smaller. It is a question of different. So, that's the only answer. Which one does God want for you? For instance, St. Benedict and St. Francis of Assisi were great founders of religious life. They were not priests. So that's the answer to that. The person who is bigger is whoever has more love of God and love of neighbor. That is holiness. If you have more charity for God and neighbor, you are greater. So who is the greatest in this room now? We don't know. We don't know. Maybe one woman behind there whose husband is a difficult man and who beats her once a week. Will they go in Ottawa? Nah. So, God knows, on the last day, we may get surprises in the presence of God. I in charge the people when I generally do food. Second question Why should late vocations exist? I don't know. God's grace can come to anybody any time. God calls St. Paul when he had been a persecutor of Christians for years. The same God called John and James and Peter when they were younger. So it depends on God's grace and the response of the individual. We cannot know all in the workings of God's grace and the response of the individual. 
the person asked, I don't know, that not to put amen in baptism. Not if you put it, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of Son and Holy Spirit. There is no amen put there. Because I, found, I don't know this word, that it will be invalid. I am not, we will have to get big theologians to answer that. I don't think it is invalid, but it is not in the right of baptism. So if you are doing emergency baptism, do not put amen. The other question, oh, oh no, many people, they seem interested in that. Religious brother, the questioner does not seem to understand what a religious brother is. A religious brother is a Christian who is baptized, confirmed, Holy Eucharist, and wants to follow Christ more closely. If such a Christian takes the three vows, poverty, chastity, obedience, in a congregation approved by the church. If he is a man, he is called a brother or monk. If he is a woman, he is called a sister or a nun. So the sisters and the brothers take exactly the same vows. But if you are women, sisters. If you are men, brothers. So the next question does not arise. The person asking, does the brother marry? It doesn't arise because one vow is the vow of chastity. That is to sacrifice marriage forever. The same vow sisters take and brothers, whether you are monastic or open religious congregation. Which means, those who don't understand the brothers, then they don't understand sisters either. Because they are just two parallel ways of life, which take the same vows. 
for men or for women to follow Christ more closely. The difference between brother and priest is, is another vocation altogether. If you watch how a priest is ordained, the candidate comes. He doesn't say anything. It is the bishop who gives him all the power, imposing hands on him and giving him power to consecrate, to preach, and to gather the people of God together. Even if the candidate says nothing, he's a priest. But brother or sister is different. It's not the bishop who speaks. It is the candidate who says, I want to follow Christ more closely. I vow to God the three vows. I was going on now with Anya. I want to call brother. I will call the Ibiazia na congregation, the brothers of St. Stephen. Ibiazia can I call what you are living in the Inviting donors to come to the altar and put their hands on the altar to sign and so on. Oh Lord. Archbishop, he has never seen one camera. He has just seen one camera. Oh, he didn't go to the I cannot swear that it is not available somewhere. I'm not saying it does, but at least putting on the address, such an attitude is totally unacceptable. We have not thought that, we have not encouraged that, and we have clearly condemned any such gesture. So I do not know where to write that for something for us. Your evidence. However, if it is done by anybody, any priest, it is wrong. Okay. I do want to kick out who I go back. What it takes. Why do the priests who have what it takes to teach the seminaries or to teach the university? Is it because of poor payment in the seminaries?